Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Good. Um, so, for those that aren't from uh, New Zealand, uh, Xero is um, cloud accounting software. Um, and, uh, you know, we think about market size. Consumer is the biggest market in the world. Um, after that, small business must be the next biggest market. Um, and the difference between consumers and small businesses, small businesses pay for things. And then um, the most software has been in the enterprise space. So small business was this, um, uh, this, mar this, this market that wasn't all that interesting. But uh, as, as the cloud um, uh, has really emerged over the last 10 years, we can suddenly get really cost-effective software out to um, the small business sector. So we started um, uh, about 11 years ago. Um, we actually listed um, in the public markets in New Zealand um, in our first year with about 100 customers. A lot of them would have had the surname of Drury or some combination of. Um, and our first year public company revenue was, um, uh, I think, $100,000, probably the lowest of any public company in the world. Um, we just had our uh, first half results for this year. Uh, we're on annualised 400 million um, run rate, 1.2 million small business customers all over the world, and we processed uh, $1.5 trillion of transactions. We have now 35% of all New Zealand businesses on the platform. Uh, we're the number one in Australia, with uh, almost 20% of all Australian businesses now on us, and the biggest in the UK, in fact, outside of the US, we're twice the size of our closest uh, competitor. So we have disrupted the industry completely with a, a technology change. Um, so one of the things that we think about is, um, is, uh, is speed as a competitive weapon. And um, lots of people ask me, hey, you know, I work for a large enterprise. Um, what should we do? I think we're going to be disrupted. And I really worried about that for a long time, what sort of advice I, was give, I, would, I would give and actually, in the end of it, my answer was, I don't care, because I'm going to disrupt you. Um, it's not my problem to not be disrupted. As an entrepreneur, we're all about disrupting. And, um, uh, and we think about one of the words that we use is weaponized speed. Speed is a competitive weapon, uh, because you just have to be going so fast. You have to make decisions. So um, what we've seen in the not-for-profit sector is a massive investment in these cloud tools that give you speed very, very cheaply. So the, the, the most important thing, I think, is um, getting rid of thinking about things in series and getting working in things in parallel. And a great example of that is the difference between Microsoft Word and Google Docs. So hopefully most of you as, um, as not-for-profits are using these cloud tools. So in a normal enterprise, someone creates a Word document and you get in the email chain and forward it around and three or four weeks later, something might emerge at the end. Whereas with Google Docs, we've got a, a, a press issue or something going on. Everyone's on Hangouts, quick, open the doc, everyone's in for 10 minutes. It's all being done, they're editing over each other, and then it goes straight out, and actually no one ever touches the document again. Done in 10 minutes, gone. When we go to a meeting, someone's throwing up their laptop, uh, taking meeting notes all the way through. People are editing the meeting notes. There's usually um, an agenda on the meeting. Uh, that was put up in, in a Google Sheet. In fact, even the meeting invitation has a link to the agenda of the meeting. We send a, a note around the day before, make sure you get all of your agenda items in. And as we're working through the agenda items, we're actually updating them, so, oh, we've done that one, done that one, done that one, and get out of that meeting as fast as possible. So everything we do is speed, because our competitors just go to work and eat their lunch. And we're there to actually win. Um, so, um, and you've got these great tools, so hopefully you're uh, thinking about those things. Then um, uh, just the second really big point that I wanted to make was um, what we're seeing now is these new types of businesses that have to have social purpose. So um, you know, there's sort of a bit of a theme that you know, business is all about profits and money and all of that stuff. That just really doesn't exist anymore. Um, well, there may be some companies that do it. You, know, maybe you might say the big banks do. But, but generally, most um, certainly founder-led or um, uh, businesses <coughs> have to really think about social purpose. The world has changed. So for us, our mission at Xero, you know, we want better schools and hospitals, and the way, the way that we do it is to create jobs at scale. We believe that um, large enterprises are all about efficiency and not creating employment opportunities. They're going to use technology to reduce employment, so we need to substitute that by creating jobs. So I spoke at the um, B20 conference in Sydney a few years ago when, um, when, when, when New Zealand was, in, was invited, and the number one issue that came out from all of the delegates uh, was youth employment. And um, I hadn't really picked that up before. I wasn't really in my world and did a bit more research and came back again, youth employment, how to get people into their first job. 
And we have grad programs and internships, so as a corporate citizen, we do quite a lot, but it actually doesn't move the needle. There's not, there, there isn't enough of us. So what we did was went back to the team and said, okay, the problem that we're hearing is youth employment. How, how do we actually make a, make a material difference at scale? And our team came up with it quite quickly. We did a few workshops, and it was, well, we've got now over 1.2 million customers. How do we get those 1.2 million customers to each create one new job? How do we actively drive that outcome? So what we did was we worked with some of our accounting partners who are specialists in working with youth, interviewed a bunch of them and came up with um, a whole bunch of content. first one was youth employment is a real issue, only going to be sold by small businesses. Then we did some heavy lifting. This is um, what minimum wages, what living wages, how you hire a young person, tips for managing young people, you know, how to use probation periods properly, all of, those, all of that sort of content. And one of the things we'll do, just going for a new bit of technology, is later this year, um, pretty early next year, we'll actually drive a calculator into the dashboard of all of our um, small business, um, uh, all of our um, small business customers, and say on your data we've modelled what adding a, a a new young person to your business will do to drive an outcome. So we're not passive about it. We're actually trying to measure our success by doing um, by doing something really active. Now the reason that's so important is we're about 1,800 people now. When you hire um, when you hire that many people, they come from a diverse range of political, um, uh, social kind of, of groups, and they want to see us drive um, those types of outcomes. We can't hire the best people in the world unless we actually have a social purpose because they won't want to work for a company that doesn't have it. And we see that coming through with all of our people. And the best way to motivate people is not just the money, it's actually having a very clear, measurable purpose and to drive our results through. And that means that there's a really good opportunity, I think, for the NGO sector to really tap into that good, good because uh, fundamentally companies not just want to be seen to do it, their internal staff are demanding it. So working out ways that you can engage, and, and with easy tools like Xero, even things like um, you know, talking to a firm, like would you sponsor our Xero? Would you, could someone be the treasurer? Could we do something with our staff? A lot of uh, businesses, um, staff demand that they spend one or two days a year out in the community actually doing things. And there's payroll gifting, we've been building that into our payroll products, all sorts of good things to support uh, the sector. So there's just a few, I've only allowed 10 minutes, so just a few quick things to talk about, <laughs> but maybe um, one or two quick questions. Um, yeah, we think about that. Um, we've, sp you know, we've spent uh, about a billion dollars, 430 million in R&D, and the rest building our channel. So there's a, a natural moat around what we've done and um, being bold enough, uh, disruptive, to raise um, over 400 million, uh, that was one of our bold strategies to assume that we've won. So for us, part of our strategy was actually listing early. So it's personally uncomfortable to list a loss-making public company, but that was a key part of our strategy. So even our, our funding was quite uh, disruptive. Yeah, no, most NGOs should be on zero now. If you're not, um, <laughs> if you are on zero, you can all leave the room. Uh, but um, the reason for that is um, we see a, you, it makes you want to cry, we see so much fraud in the not-for-profits. And part of that is because um, you have a multi, multi um, uh, you know, sign-in authority to make things move. And so no one sees the bank statement. With zero, we get the bank transactions in every morning. So, uh, so those bank transactions come in and then the, uh, everyone in the, say, the board of the not-for-profit can see every day where are the cash is. So a real issue around uh, Taranaki Surf Life Saving a few years ago. But it breaks your heart. Um, so um, getting, um, uh, I think Xero is, is best practice um, for NGOs because it just gives you transparency. You can actually see what's going on inside the bank account. The other big thing is that you know, normally you're sitting there at the um, annual meeting and uh, you know, who wants to be treasurer? Everyone takes a little step back. Um, whereas um, when it's on zero, it's like, mate, hold it, because it's fun and it's easy. Right, I can uh, see that everyone's considering zero. No, 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 it's not considering, it's mandatory. <laughs> it would be irresponsible, and now you know it exists, it would be irresponsible uh, to not be on it. Thanks, everyone. Let's give him a very good time.